And now, for our senior class order, I present to you Ms. Mary Kathleen Wagner. I can see your religion. It's just what he sings that just still bananas inside. Still though, Dorothy, doesn't Ben still have eyes for Mary Kathleen? There are times when I would like to cancel her birth certificate. Hi, Ben. doesn't explain the related spasms, outbreaks, and contraction, contraction you've been having. Ms. Rogers, we here at Scott and White have a team that have examined your records exhaustively, and in medicine we have to work with the stats. When such analysis has banished doubt, we must deduce the truth. You're experiencing the onset of a distal form of muscular dystrophy. We have seen the same onset before in women as young as you, and I know this may seem shocking, but we have to face the facts and you're losing your ability to walk. You're gonna have to start thinking about who could care for your children and possibly take you to their home. Perhaps your friend or your mother could take turns. My husband knew the marriage would not last. He says Mary's brother Cecile Dewitt knew that her Hawaiian songs German husband had about 10 girlfriends going into the marriage. She probably married our high school's heartthrob just because she couldn't afford rice and to keep up with you. Hmm, that wouldn't surprise me. I don't think, Dorothy, that you haven't even heard the latest. About Mary Kathleen? Yes, she's quite disabled. I, I think the divorce has taken the life out of her. Disabled? What, what do you mean? You haven't heard? Doctors at Scott and White have diagnosed her with muscular dystrophy. Oh, bless her heart. What, what do the men think? I don't really know. I do know that nobody's really stepping forward to take care of her three children, especially Ben Rogers. Who's got them? Mary's hardworking mother, of course. <laughs> Please, God, make me like the bumblebee. Help me to walk again. 
So the doctor from Temple, Texas said you could never walk again? That reminds me of the story from the good book. The apostle Peter encountered a lame man by the temple gate called Beauty. The lame man wanted arms, but Peter healed him. And the lame man went walking, leaping, and praising God. Mary, Mary. Caleb believed that God's army could take on iron chariots. Elijah believed that God could rain down fire on top of Mount Carmel. The Apostle Paul writes in praise of him who can do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his promise. Mary, do you believe? Do you believe? Ben, yes, it was nice seeing you the other day with my friends. I've always loved you singing. Pardon? Oh, I've been doing some teaching, some research. Oh yes, Rice University was great. And I'm not living at home or anything like that. Incidentally, I heard the news about you and Mary Kay. Hmm. <laughs> well, I don't know. Of course, seeing as you did sir, fight for our country, I guess I can make the time. Why don't you call me sometime? Hello, Tim. Hey, Mary. Would you like to come in? Yes. So what are you doing here, Mary? Where are the kids? They will be okay for the moment. I wanted to bring you this doll for your child. But she's not even born yet. <laughs> come, Mary. Let's sit. to pay me back, you won't do that by dropping over dead. Remember, I'm not the one who suggested you should enroll at the University of Houston. been great, Dorothy. You should do this more often. It's been a, a little fun. <laughs> what are you saying? You took Mary and not me. I had a crush and that was all. But <laughs> what? Look, I don't need a semi-employed musician. I think there's been a situation of too much urgency in your life. I can see the fine lines of worry each day on your face. The protests, Professor Davis, what do they say? What are my chances with biochemical science? Your aptitude test shows that you could be a physician. Your test and quizzes show that you'd be lucky to be a nurse. <sighs> Professor Davis, is there no hope? You have high scores in persuasion and oratory. Maybe you should refocus your career in business. Ordinary brooms and mops spread and press dirt into crevices, slowly turning your home into a cave. But Stanley Home Products are scientifically designed to cull out grit, dust, and sand. Both attack the dirtiest parts of our homes with the most effective of equipment. Both restore the color and shine of surfaces which can over time turn our homes into the most beautiful places on earth. It is so entirely good of you to have me for coffee. As I was saying, you two are such good friends that I would love for you to have access to the best in home enhancement. 
And that also comes with the fun of the Stanley Home Enhancement Party. I'm just amazed you're walking again. Thought you had muscular dystrophy. Well, the doctors were wrong. <laughs> what wonderful luck. Mary, we are so happy for you. But we don't do heart cells with our friends, and we have what we need. It's not that we don't want to help you. I personally would love a soft cell party. And I'm sure your oratorical gifts will keep us informed. Oh, Dorothy, this will be fun. You have friends, and now you can give your friends a chance to meet and become better friends. And I'll inform the group in a completely soft way. There will be no forcing. What if our friends don't buy any of that inventory you'll need to unload? As this sign-up form makes clear, you are under no obligation to make any purchases. Mary, this is going to be great. Now, I know you have three kids and you're constantly having to sell, so you go run along. We, Hattie and I will take care of it. <gasps> Thank you, Dorothy. Thank you, Hattie. Thanks again. Why did you get us involved in this? It has to do with an article I'm writing about, about business opportunities for women. I'm interested in seeing what this Stanley party dynamic is really like. and. What has really become of our former classmate? I'm glad you don't mind us confronting her about this. We have to set limits on our time. Oh, there's nothing worse than being bored. Say, is your mother home this evening? No, she's at another one of her parties. Well, thanks. Do you think you could tell her? Wait, never mind. She's got three kids, no husband, a job, and she's bashing out at parties every night. I didn't realize she was still so radioactive. So, everyone advised you not to come to the convention, but you came anyway? How could I miss it with such an inspiration like you? Our Stanley Home Products queen of sales on hand. Well, uh... Mary. Mary Kay. Well, Mary Kay. You know, it's just going to be a lot of hard work. Oh, I love the work. Direct sales is a way of meeting the most interesting of people with the most interesting of things. And I feel this is one of the greatest moments of my life, meeting our national sales leader. I'm a little more than a fanatic with a disabled husband. You see, there's so many women out there with tremendous talents, but they don't realize how great they can be. But you believe you can receive if you're willing to work really hard at it. First, can you allow me to take notes? I don't want to miss a word you say. I'm flattered. Maybe you'll get something out of this. <sighs> Thank you. It means so much more to me when I can write it. Now, where should I begin? Mary, you begin not with yourself, but with the customer. You start writing down your friends, your family, your acquaintances down at church or even in the club. You write down what they want and what they need. Some of my friends don't need or want floor shine or even a fine tuned mop. Exactly. But they may want friends. They may want a party. They may want to make some money. They may want to better impress their own mates. They may want to find a better way to impress their own wayward husbands. They may want to even find a better way to occupy their children with something that's fun but useful. Are you getting my drift? And as a consultant of Stanley Home Products, it is my duty to adapt to those needs. You're a good student, and that's good because you're going to end up studying everyone. Oh, teacher, teach me more. Well, Mary's no candy ass. She just made $800 off of our friends the other night. It's amazing. We give her we give her a list, the list turns into numbers, the numbers into conversations, and suddenly she's everyone's best friend before the party even starts. Did you learn anything? Yes, I learned that our former classmate, Mary Kay, now with the alias, has no time restraints, is terribly greedy, and yet is also as pleased as hell to encounter constrained board housewives confined to their suburban concentration camps. If women only sell to women, well, there's not much fun or money in that. 
Huh. You remember the other night when we encountered her son on the curb and he said that she was at a party? Huh. That's funny. In here, I thought she was out playing backseat bingo with some man. Of course, she is working night shifts. Dreadful. Working to impoverish fellow women by day and letting her children run wild at night. It's like she's found some sort of feminine zone for work that is something like men do, but will never have the opportunities of the real world. The more she succeeds, the more women fail. Tilly, thank you again Bro, for allowing me to call just, you back. I, I'm sick of you just um, being in the way. You're just a waste of space. Just leave. Tilly, thank oh, you again for allowing me to call you back. Because you, you just sit around and is just don't not do my kind of city. The, the kids are I'm all on sports and the new schools and they got into a fight. Marilyn and Richard quit it with the screaming babies. I'm on the phone with Tilly. I'm sorry. Yes, the executives treat me okay, but we never seem to know how to work our way up. I make more sales, but that doesn't seem to matter. Oh, and I have to tell you the most unforgettable moment at my time with Stanley Home Products. We had our convention in Chicago, and I waited three hours to meet with Mr. Frank Stanley Beveridge, the founder of the company and one of the most exciting men in business today. And you know what? After waiting three hours, he didn't even look at me. I think he was just worried about how long the line was after me. You're gonna like it with us, Miss K. You're gonna sell the best of luxury items, and we're gonna bring you back to Texas. I have always had a special fondness for alligator bags and full grain soft leather items. Monogrammed heirlooms that get better with age. It's our gift to our friends we call customers. I mean, it's almost like we're into philanthropy. <laughs> the superior merchandise offered in direct sales is exactly why I love direct sales. We do it better because we have to. And by the way, you're going to love the Dallas market. Since the end of the big war, the Big D has been flush with oil and is rolling in clover with big money. Mary Kay has been good. She's number one in recruitment and number three in sales. But I'm telling you, Chad, she's going to be an even bigger problem. The people that she's kind of bringing in really aren't in accord with the franchise system that we're trying to get going here in our company. She's got all these undercapitalized free rovers all over the country, kind of women like her, for example. And you know, they want to talk about benefits and promotion schedules, but they're not really helping us to stockpile our gifts. They don't have the money for the inventory. I'll tell you, Chet, she's going really against the grain of what we're trying to do really badly. And I would, I would not promote her, no. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, look at Bill Atkins, he's great. Let's, let's hire Bill Atkins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Bill Atkins? I hired Bill Atkins. So you did, Mary. Okay, so let me get this straight. I hired Bill Atkins, and I believe in Bill Atkins. But Bill has never made our top sales circle. Bill has never recruited a single regional manager, and Bill only has one year of experience, and I have 11. And as you know, my ratings in all the other areas have been off the charts. Mary Kay, you have, you have been good. I mean, after all, uh, you, <laughs> you discovered Bill Atkins. <laughs> but the firm knows, too, that you have all the priorities. And in fact, you've got, well, I, you're kind of like a larger than life mother in some ways. <laughs> You've got all these sales recruiting all these like children around the country and you'll go to any length to protect them. But we'd be better served to support our friends who aren't afraid to support our franchise system and stockpile our wonderful gifts. And look, I'm sorry to get personal, but you know we've got an important contract at stake. And if your daughter Marilyn gets sick, we can't be sure you're going to make the meeting. You've got other priorities. It's obvious that you can't be hired at this time. You hold your friends and family is way more important than Will Gibbs. You are continuing to demote me because I am a woman. No. You're not number one because we need someone who's going to make the company number one. Very well then. I am resigning here and now for World Gifts. 
Are you sure? Do tumbles down. Marriage, education, career. Why, oh God, was I not meant to live? I don't even have the children around to talk to anymore. I'm a washed up old maid. <laughs> Marilyn, sweetie, I don't know if I would trust the doctors to mess with your back. Sometimes, well, God, we can always hope for miracles. No, I'm fine. I'm having a good time here by myself with a cup of coffee and a set of legal pads. Yes, well. But it is kind of nice to step back for the first time in my life and think, what was right about Stanley and World Gifts? What was wrong? What would an ideal company do to avoid these errors? Okay, sweetie. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Oh, but you are so good to have me over again. The Stanley party I had at your home was the best. But what I really remember was this facial cream you passed out to your ladies. Where did you get that from? My daddy, J.W. Heath was a tanner who lived in a small town, McKinney. He used this lotion for leather, and over time he noticed the effect of lotion and this lotion on his hands. They looked young in relation to those of his friends, so I have kept the formula and you given some to my friends. Have you ever ran it by the FDA? The what? The Food and Drug Administration of our government. No, I'm not interested in cells. It was just something I did. Ova, could I buy the right to use that formula? Would I still be able to mix them from time to time for my friends? I don't see why not. <laughs> How much would you pay for it? Ova, you write down the formula on this sheet of paper and sign your name at the bottom I will give you $500 for the exclusive right to this formula. But before we do any of that, we'll take it over to your typewriter and add the proviso saying that you could use it on an informal basis for your friends. Is it a deal? Mary Kay, I would love to help you out. I'm happy to do it. Oh, oh Miss Moore, you are so wonderful. You don't know how much hope you are giving me. You are providing me a road back to the path where I most want to be. You know, single men don't have to suffer from a fund deficit, and neither should single women. You know, these new pills they have out, <laughs> they work. I'm not sure, Mary, you realize just how popular Dorothy is. Have you heard about Ben, how he's on his fourth marriage and owns a car dealership now? Yes, the children keep me informed. How do you know? Dorothy Hattie, I am about to begin a new business venture in cosmetics, and I wondered if you would like to be a part of an amazing new concept. I have discovered the most amazing facial cream. Before I used it, my face felt like gravel, but look at it now. I have presents for both of you. Just give me a few minutes and I'll show you how to use it and you can tell me when it's best for you to invest in my new business. Sounds like fun. Mary, look, let us be frank. You are pretty, but shouldn't you be getting Miss America as your front person? Why will people come to you for tips on beauty? Honestly, I think if Mary thinks it's a great idea, then she should invest everything into it. I'll even throw a 200 in myself. You think? Mary should throw away what capital she has to invest in this. Richard, I feel so nervous. It's like I'm taking a jump into a book. Well, Mom, there are many 45-year-old women I know who are willing to risk their entire retirement on a new business venture. I'll grant you that. It's possible, if I didn't believe in you 100%. 
I don't know enough about the pores of the skin, molecules, and substances. I s I've spent so much, and I still don't have the papers in order for the FDA's proof. I still don't know how to alter the cream they want it. I've only taken those chemistry classes. Mom, remember the statistical scientist of a doctor who said you would never walk again? Perhaps God brings you this darkness so that you may better appreciate his light, so that you may not just walk, but dance and leap a little bit. So how do you know the other? She was a dear friend who has three of my world gifts parties. I'm in direct sales. I'm sorry. You were introduced to so many people at the beginning. Who are you again? I'm George Calvin. I work at Parkland Hot Did you say chemist? Yeah, I work in the research. I just love research. Tilly, this hall and back guy is sticking to my imagination like crazy glue. I just fixed my eyes on him, and sure enough, he asked me to dance. He wanted to follow me to my car, but I just handed him a slip with my phone number on it and said as coyly as I could, not tonight, thanks. Oh, and here's the best part. He called me last night. Mom, you're great. You just jump into things. Personally though, Mom, wouldn't it make a little sense to go just a little slower with the business idea and with the Hallenbach guy? <laughs> Mom, you're gonna get some speeding tickets. Though I kind of wish that with all the available men around church, you could have found someone there, I guess. It's too late. George and I have decided. George has all the problems with the cream worked out. He's so wonderful. And I want to tell you something else. He's going to be my vice president of finance and administration. Have you heard the latest? Mom's going to wig school in Florida. Yeah, what's the deal on that? Oh, she says wigs are the hottest rage, and she's going to need them to help launch her cosmetics. <laughs> so the cream transforms the person, and the wigs hide the person. Soon all women will look like Barbie dolls. It's okay by me, though. Oh, and what do you do to make yourself look better for your wife? You know, you could at least stop smoking. The smell gets a little oppressive. Well, I'd smoke less if I had more alcohol. Like, in a Manhattan or two every hour would be okay. Oh, ben, you're starting to remind me of Daddy. Actually... This George guy is reminding me of Daddy. George, you are the most wonderful man I have ever known. Marrying you yesterday was the best decision I have ever made. And you, you're so enthusiastic. I love your words. And your children are so amazing. Richard is a little prodigy. Marilyn's so smart. Ben, well, he's so funny. How did you ever raise three such fine children without a husband? Oh, who can explain such things? That's no answer. I want you to do your best. So tell me, what did you do as a single mom? Well, I certainly prayed a lot. But whether it was finding one-on-one -on -one time to spend with each or bringing them to get form a, bringing them together to form a mail delivery business on Saturdays, or dragging them to Sunday school, and I knew they would fight along the way, I stayed focused on now that they're out of my house, I want to stay focused on them. Oh yes, I have no physical problems whatsoever. Oh, exercise? Well, we both work so hard. George is a little overweight and has some blood pressure issues, so it works out. He doesn't mind me being a little... Team Mary. now, and I'm still trying. I don't feel too to good. Get all of this. I don't.
you to be the first to know that my George is dead. <laughs> and Richard, I have also decided that although you are already 20 and have a good job for yourself, that I am going to need you to replace George as the company's new administrator. Children, it is because George died that I must move ahead with what he accomplished the last months of his life. Mom, you mentioned you needed a new administrator and that my being 20 was no barrier. I'll do it. I'll quit my job and become your new chief administrator. Thank you, Richard. Okay, is that going to be okay with you two? Great idea, Mom. Good going, Richard. As long as Richard doesn't get too frisky with spending. Well, Mom, I can't quit my job and I can't leave my family, but I have five grand in my savings account. I want you to have it. Take this to help you take off. Oh, Ben, thank you. Thank you. This will give us that critical mass of inventory we'll need. I will work hard to make sure your investment pays off. Mom, you always cared for us while our dad let us down. You were always there for us. I'll help as much as I can. Ben, if you've cut your savings a little short, let us know. And Richard, let me know if I can be a help to you. They also appear to be the ones drinking all the champagne. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Mary Kay. Hi, I'm Julie. I just moved to Dallas. Uh, I thinking I need to step my game up a bit. Let me tell you something about our Fountain of Youth, our time-wise skincare set. Well, I was thinking something a little more transformative. Uh, how about that big blonde wig over there? Oh, yes. Mom, the wigs are going to have to go. There are too many returns. It takes our consultants too long to figure out where they take go. What exactly is mom doing now? Mom's working on the other side of things. She gets people to work for us calling them consultants and then the consultants recruit other consultants and the recruiters become directors. It's like she doesn't even have to create a management team, it just grows organically right out from under her. But though that's where the growth is, we're the ones that remain necessary and fairly independent from her and her sales army. But doesn't the growing workforce get to be a drain on you and the company? I mean, with all these hundreds of new women? See, what mom is doing is she's making these women into independent business women as if they have their own separate firms. We don't give them medical insurance, but we do set them up for success in any other way we can. In fact, they can set their own hours and put their families before their jobs. Mom flouts this. In fact, one thing you better memorize right now is this company puts God first, family second, and career third. Mom will have a fit if anybody decides, if anybody says they want to put the, their job ahead of their family. But what's good for us is the consultants have to buy their inventory with cash or a money order. We don't accept any personal checks. Well, sounds like we men are going to manage a nice little island in this company of women. There's a catch though. How do we keep these women interested in working for us and accepting our advice and our counsel? Mom is of the opinion that women crave recognition above all else. The problem is though, she's trying to get gifts for everyone that are very personal and special, but she's trying to mass produce them all at the same time. Thank you so much for coming out of your way. My pleasure. I remember you from World Gifts. Yeah, those were the good old days. And now you deal with specialty gift items that companies can use to bestow thanks. More than that, good gifts are a mission minor trophy of success. The right kind of gift is the most intensive form of advertising you can imagine. They can boost morale, rally troops around slogans. Every, remember, every special niche gift you give makes a roadway in people's minds. 
Their eyes see what your company has done for them. Their hearts register the goals of your company. You make more than friends, you make converts. I can see that getting and making the right gifts will involve some extraordinary decisions. It would almost be like getting hitched. My thought exactly. But with all those beautiful women out there, which one do you choose? I would think that if a woman is attractive and available and even rich, she would make a pretty good catch. Well, that combination is trying to free dial your way into a safe. My first marriage to a high school sweetheart was a short one. And, well, my second wife, she had two kids coming up and she, she had she had passed away. Well, there is so much I want to talk to you about. I suggest we continue this conversation at the Pyramid downtown tonight. It's my favorite restaurant. It has great fusion cuisine. I'd be delighted. Ben, I was wondering, the packages in which you're sending out our foundation line seem just a little big. Now the little uniboxes inside holding the cleansing cream, night cream, and magic mask seem fine, but the skin freshener box just doesn't seem right. Don't worry about it. Richard's working on that. By the way, it's great to have you with us, Marilyn. Oh, I am excited. Mom's just a genius. Except in matters of love and romance. <laughs> True. I don't know where she picked up this Mel Ash guy. Oh, he's a salesman, all right. That guy has eyes like a wolf. I wish you'd met him in church or something. He drinks, he smokes, he raves about the swimsuit edition of Sports Illustrated. <laughs> I didn't think it'd last, but I'm afraid to say it looks like we're going to get another new dad. Hi, can I help you? No, it's fine. Well, I happen to be Mel Ash, Mary Kay's new husband, so please tell me what's wrong. Well, what an honor to meet you. I'm one of your wife's directors, and I'm here for the convention. I thought I saw you at the meeting earlier. Uh, so tell me, why the long face? The storm is getting so bad, and I can't afford another night in this hotel. Listen, I got a little bit of credit at this hotel. So let's get to the desk right now, and I'll sign you up for another night. Darling, we were married on a Thursday, and every Thursday since, he has given me a special Thursday gift. He has given me a book, a rose, some fudge, and once an angel wing begonia. He always said he wanted to be a help to me and that he didn't mind standing in the shade. Oh, Mary Kay, where did you ever find a man like that? Well, gang, record profits for the 13th straight year in a row. And now we're on the New York Stock Exchange. Here's to Mother. And here's to you, Richard. You were always her example to the world that she was just as successful as a mother as she was a businesswoman. Oh, come on. You two are making the firm happen. Honestly, I think it was just guilt that led Mom to hire me. Yes, Richard. You were always the baby Mom to comfort in. Ben and I had to do some fast growing up during the days of the divorce and after when Mom was trying to do it all. For a while, I really resented it. You know, though, Mom taught us success in a competitive capitalist society. That's no little feat. You know, I honestly think it was her fanaticism about time, you know? Don't waste all the time on pity jobs. Like, how she used to always leave that watch on her bathroom counter. I think that was her secret. She's got the Dale Carnegie appreciation thing down too, let me tell you. The pink Cadillac she gives to our best director as well as the babysitter Tilly. It's quite a reward, and it's catching on. I just wish she had more time for us. Mm -hmm. I know I still get mad at her for only wanting to go gift shopping once a year just to save time. Well, Marilyn, now you're going to be able to go shopping every day of the year. We're going to be rich, and I think beyond our wildest dreams. Mary Kay isn't just a company, it's a movement. Housewives get into direct sales positions, and then lower class women serve as their housekeepers. Women want the opportunities we are conferring, and we're breaking on the benefits. Just to that, guys. must have gotten a good photo op together. Mary Kay destroys real careers for thousands of women, and now she's become the Catherine Beecher of the 20th century, filling the airways and books with her stupid bromides. Hattie, I'm serious. Before, this was just a person-to-person -person rivalry, but that woman needs to be stopped. And she's in favor of ruthlessly sexualizing every woman in America, turning them into dolls rather than human beings, and she is short-circuiting the feminist movement we are so close to winning here in Texas and throughout the United States. Well, what are you going to do about it? 
I'm going to do something big and bad about it. Mark my word. Mary, come and watch this new show with me. It's about our city. They got this guy starring from our Fort Worth, uh, Hagman, or something like that. Son of Peter, Pamela, Mary Martin. You know, it takes oil bearings. Big business. Mel, I have to firm up my six objectives for tomorrow. What kind of nonsense is that? Get over here now. Sweetheart, I don't think you understand. How I organize my day matters to thousands of my directors and consultants. Yeah, and if you don't get over here now, your thousands of consultants are going to wonder what kind of woman you really are. Mel, be reasonable. You don't I need me to watch TV. I say, get over here now. I would like to know what your problem is. My problem is, I want my wife to be by my side for a few hours each night. I'm going to tell you something else right now, Miss Ash. If you're not, you better get home by 7 p.m. or else. I thought you were an advanced man. I don't care how advanced the man is. If it's 7 p.m. and there's no dinner and no wife, there's going to be no marriage either. I do have an interesting problem in my congregation. A woman who, bless her heart, is an abundant giver. Uh, she's a fan of enthusiasm and she's a well, I'm supporting the missions. I mean, you seem like you have a whole new dimension of problems, huh? <laughs> well, consider this, uh, brother. Consider Jeroboam, 1 Kings 12, uh, king of Israel. The greatest apostate in the entire Bible. Now, what did he do? Uh, Jeroboam took a bull-like god and he called it Yahweh. He confused the false god with the true god in order to establish his kingdom. I'm alarmed that I have a woman in my congregation who is confused in the false god with the true god in order to establish her corporation. I mean, come on, a, a company isn't the nation of Israel anyway. Well, um, you know, I sometimes wonder about her, you know, and I wonder about all of us Christians. And that is why do we always wander up right up to the very edge of, of hell's sky? Well, I bet I can guess the name of the Christian you're talking about. And I'll grant you, she's internalized a lot of her faith and is using it for co corporate motives. But we have Mary Kay director in our congregation, and from what I understand, the corporation promotes church attendance. Yes, I suppose she does, and she's a very kind and thoughtful lady, really. I mean, I don't think that her, her husband would even come to church if it wasn't for her. But let me just run one more thing go by her. I mean, here you have a Southern Baptist who is the leader of the largest cosmetics firm in the country. Now doesn't that pose problems from the standpoint of Isaiah 3 and the prophet's concern for the haughty sexual demeanor of women? I mean, is she haughty like the woman from Isaiah 3? You know, arrogance was the main problem there. Ah, uh, no, she's not too uh, haughty. I mean, have you even talked to her about your Isaiah 3 or Jeroboam misgivings at all? I'm afraid to go there. I'm, I'm just afraid that she might just pick up and leave and I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> then all her financial contributions will just go to some interdenominational phony who thinks he needs a Rolls Royce in order to make house calls. I love the way the wind breathes in and out. And in the darkness, the grass feels like black velvet. Happy Thursday, girl. Oh, Mel, I can hardly keep up with your weekly anniversaries of our wedding. You are the sweetest man on earth. And I found the only woman in the United States who can stay beautiful forever. Well, I'm inspired. Mary, it's our TV time. We have to go see who shot JR. I'm right behind you, Mel. Well, I've done it. I've got two of the most significant women in the United States coming to my house. Does Mary Kay know that Betty for Dan is coming over? Of course, that's part of the lore. She also knows that some concerned wealthy Texas women are coming to meet about women's issues. I didn't exactly tell her about the Equal Rights Amendment or that there will not be one other conservative woman there except for her. What's your plan? I'm going to shove some financial support for the ERA down Mary Kay's throat or we're going to humiliate her. What can I do to help? You're going to be the doyen at the window. You'll then make sure that she enters the parlor where me and Betty will be. We're going to see where she stands and if she'll help us. And if she seems opposed? I'm also going to have by my side a Houston brawler, Beatrice Bowler. She'll know what to do. 
And what about you? Oh, I'm not going to involve myself. I don't want to miss out another chance to get at Mary Kay if this fails. Action. Welcome to my world. Won't you come on in? Won't you come on in? Knock and the door will open. Knock and the door will open. Seek and you will find. Ask and it will be given. The key to this world of mine. I'll be waiting here. I'll be waiting here. With my arms unfurled. With my arms unfurled. Waiting just for you. Waiting just for you. Welcome to our world. Welcome to our world. I'm proud of you, Texas woman, passing the Equal Rights Amendment. We have money to give, too. It's just about getting the right donors. I'm excited to hear you say that. Well, what the legislators in Nebraska and Tennessee have done in overturning their support for the ERA's passage is reprehensible enough. Some of the strangest people in the United States are from South Dakota where they seem bent on nullifying the effort of Congress to extend the voting on the ERA's passage. I have a guest who I think you'll be pleased to meet. I'm sure you've heard about her. She makes millions each year. I know she's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Well, that's wonderful. What's her position? She believes in equal pay for equal work. She emphasizes the importance of women working outside of the household as you do in your book. Um, and um, Oh, and she's a former classmate of mine from Houston. Well, it's an honor to meet the author of The Feminine Mystique. I'm Mary Kay. I know you. You were on 60 Minutes. Mary Kay is a great advocate for women in Texas. And of cosmetics, I see. Yes, I found that for women, beauty is a great stimulant of pride and performance. Well, the most important thing is employment. Women need to work to fulfill themselves. And I think you do a great job providing jobs. If we could provide a little more muscle to our movement, we're going to be over the top in providing the key opportunity for women, which is the enactment of the Equal Rights Amendment to the Constitution. Well, you should probably know now, I don't consider myself a feminist. I believe a woman's first priority is her faith, the second her family, and then, only then, the job. Mary Kay, I don't know if you've met one of the great underwriters for the Houston Symphony Orchestra and Alley Theater, Beatrice Bowler. So good to meet you, Miss Kay. You know, with that little corporation you have, Mary, I've had several problems. But let me get this straight. You want women to put their church and family duties first so that the only job they can get is in direct sales? Now who's getting hit with these hard sales? Not men, women. You know, you and your group remind me of the Vic Victorian Ladies Club of the late 19th century, dabbling in their own little worlds of art and literature while society passed them by. Only in this case, your little world consists of selling and using beauty products. <laughs> now, I don't think I understand. When my husband left me in 1945, I had no college education, three children, and a severe medical problem. I had way more month than money. Her excels allowed me a way to get out of this hole and provide for my family. Now, I simply hope that with the Mary Kay Corporation, I can provide women the same opportunity to realize their dreams, just like I did. But you're not helping women. You're exhausting them. You're making them feel guilty for not putting in more than their first share in the work in the family. You are burdening them with outdated religious ideas. Oh, my beloved man. You've got to go through with this. <coughs> if you really love me, tell those screwball doctors to stop because I can't help you anymore. Yes, you heard right. Mel Ash is no more. These days, Mom seems married most of all to the manuscript she is writing. Leaders certainly need to know how not to waste dollar time on penny jobs. And as I like to say, the speed of the leader is the speed of the gang. But the most important thing I have learned as a leader is how important it is to praise people to success. Women especially crave recognition. The last time most re women received applause is when they graduated from high school. 
the Mary Kay Corporation is dedicated to correcting this deficit in our appreciation. I'm so pleased we could meet. It's an honor to meet someone that's done so much in stopping the Equal Rights Amendment dead in its tracks. Well, it was only a small and for the record anonymous contribution. You remember what I said about that. But Phyllis, you are the one who has made it all happen. The traditional women and men of our nation salute you for your thrilling accomplishments in derailing the feminist movement. We need to preserve our identity <clears throat> and prerogatives and the allure of special beauty. And thank you, Mary, for so much that you've done in this line of work. I guess I am here today, though, that I would like to conquer more problems than just that, such as abortion, gay rights, and the selling out of America at the United Nations. I have always admired you, Phyllis. Your heart has always been in the right place. Well, on that note, Mary, would you be in a position to help us with our initiatives? Unfortunately not, Phyllis. I feel my calling is to embolden and support our Mary Kay women. If I were to spearhead a movement against the abortion, or even in a vocal way, the anti-ERA movement, I could no longer inspirit my gang of consultants and directors. When mom branches out, she likes the inspiration track, but she doesn't even return the phone calls of fellow Dallas Ops. She says she hates parties. H. Ross Pro, T. Boone Pickens, Tex Dram. Oh, mother, I can't believe this. Why isn't she rubbing shoulders with the local glitterati and representing the feminine standpoint more? She doesn't have enough time, Marilyn. I agree with you, Ben. <laughs> Whether it's the salary issue, the schedule issue, or the content issue, Mom can't seem to take her off the need to personally inspire, award, applaud, and hug thousands of Virginia associates. All this love for her people is going to kill her one day. It's like she's addicted to Dale Carnegie or something. I can't believe she's still sending out birthday cards to everyone in the corporation and scribbling personal notes to her directors. Richard, you've got to tell her she needs to spend more time, not only with her family and with herself, but in dealing with the bigger issues and throwing her weight around a little bit. Actually, Marilyn, what Mom really needs is to go on a diet. <laughs> Let her go on that one. She's healthy enough for her age. Well, one thing Mom and her inspirational writings never did was provide a time for exercise. <sighs> That's right, Richard. If Mary Kay is to be a company about glamour, then we can't have our corporate logo looking fat. Well, this is actually helping us do what we need to do, which is to transi transition away from the media of the founder to the media of the directors and the consultants. We need to define beauty to get Miss America on our side. Well, sounds like this is going to be a tough task. Do you mind if I partake in the effort? Mom, the corporation needs to adjust better. I mean, we need better marketing, new products. We can't just keep rewarding your old friends who need to retire anyway. We need to start thinking about appealing to the new generation without you as our leader. It sounds like you would like to kill me off. Oh, no, Mom, no. I... Why does this corporate life we live always bring us to this kind of impasse? Maybe I should resign. Maybe we should all resign. No, Richard, no. Let me resign. Let me get out of the way. You are the only one I have trusted and will trust. Mom, I'm sorry. Why as CEO do I carry around this terrible wish to replace my own mother? Life has become insane. Richard, I know what you're saying. I'm going to leave this corporation and limit my time to writing and being with my grandchildren. Mom, you'd make so much more with your investments if you would. It is not my goal to be the richest person in the cemetery. Well, you guys know how much John Rockefeller was when he died. He left it all. Mom, you can be the first woman in America to make a billion dollars on her own terms. <coughs> I am worried that when I go, y'all are not going to realize how vital it is that we recognize our women. Pink Cadillacs, alligator handbags, golden pins. We need to maintain the flow of gifts to reward those who make our own lives exceptional. Oh, thank God you're here, Richard. A nurse was here about 15 minutes ago. Mom seemed fine, and all of a sudden she... Why does she... her face look like that? Mom, listen to us. How are you? How are you feeling? 
She can't even talk. I think she's had a stroke. Somebody call an ambulance. Mother, I have some company for you. You remember Dorothy Zesh, don't you? Well, I do, and I thought you might enjoy seeing a friend from your earliest years. Well, here she is. Mary Coughlin, how are you? Mary Kathleen, how are you? Oh, you poor dear, I've heard you can't talk anymore. That's why I decided to come. We've been through a lot together, haven't we? I just had to drop by, especially since I was in Dallas anyway. Oh. Well, thank you, I've heard something of your writing. Oh, a gift? For me? Thank you. Perhaps we can have a conversation and I could use the things out of your book to bring out what you'd like to say. <laughs> so, it says in here that you balance priorities. Is there anything in here about me? Okay, that's fine. Reagan High School is where I gave us a mere parties is long gone. Oh, but you have quite the fan club back in Houston. My friends and I followed your success right to the top. You have done so incredibly well. Of course, some of my friends allege that Mary Kay is little more than a pink pyramid. The only people who really profited were the ones who raced their way to the top first. By banning personal checks and loans, you forced your associates at the bottom of the pyramid, forcing them to purchase and stockpile your inventory. Mary Kay expanded. It expanded to thousands of ineffective saleswomen who are being duped by this movement. Marilyn said you had a visitor today. Horrible, this is wrong. We'll make sure that Dorothy woman doesn't come again. How unnerving. Oh, Richard, I had no idea this was gonna happen. This Dorothy woman, who I knew from Mom's earliest years, comes in all smiles and then... Wait a minute, I remember Mom talking about this Dorothy woman. She was her high school friend. I talked to her at the curb of our home one night in Houston. I thought she'd become one of Mom's... That's what I thought. Oh. She's as bad as that Ova Spinmore woman who used that loophole in their contract to sell it to beauty control. We should probably see our lawyers about this. So you forgive her? Well, I don't know if I can forgive her. It was almost like some sort of terrorist attack. I visited with your mother before she died. I asked her if she felt she was a sinner, if she confessed her sins, and if she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. And she shook her hand, head, yes. Well, she paid for the educational wing of your church. Wasn't that enough? <laughs> you might think so, but the real question that the church must ask is, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior? Well, I'm glad you said yes, and you got all that squared away, Reverend. And now, what about the eulogy? The Savior, after all, saved the Savior. And I think members of the family who have done very well by her should bring out all her wonderful virtues and how she passed those on to those around her. Marilyn, Mom always put the company first and you always have to put the family first. I'm quite frankly sick of it. Well, you know what? It's not just about the company. She was a family woman before anything else. So you want me to let you put your position as a daughter on top of the entire corporation she spent most of her life that's exactly what I want. You know, for the first time, I don't think you should be in charge of absolutely everything. Marilyn, no. The raptors in this funeral will sag with Mary Kay directors and consultants. If you're going to take that small of a mindset, we should limit it to just the family. Have a separate ceremony. This is why I always feel that since I had to quit my work with the corporation because of my back problems, I've pretty much become the orphan of the family. You know, uh, you could balance the needs you both have by ensuring that you don't have a messy proliferation of testimonies. Uh, we could elect someone to give a very weighty, I don't mean scholarly, but a learned tribute of your mother's life, and I think that that would satisfy both the family and the directors. But Mom was all about Mother Henning. She had all kinds of directors and consultants, and a few of them were even academics. Oh, Richard, do you have to be so insensitive? I was her only daughter. Do you have to corner the market on mom to such an extent that me and the family mean nothing? Let me explore what I have in mind more. Your mother really was an amazing success story. I think when you three were little and she was young, 
And she was kind of like caught in a maze of corporate, bureaucratic, of medical, uh, educational world. And without the degree she had and having to raise you three, she nevertheless got out of that maze. Uh, and she rose and right to the top. I mean, it's an amazing success story. I like that. We need to dramatize how magnificent her life was and we could get Marilyn to speak for the family and then maybe a few of her top directors to give funny and heartwarming stories. <laughs> her mother was one of a kind. Yes, yes, and I'm just thinking out loud here. Uh, do you think your mother was in some way a kind of inspiration for all women? Or was she in some way the, really the only woman who could have... Wait, passed? are you saying that our mother was one of the most successful women of her time and that really she, her success required a level of fanaticism so intense that... Well, uh, she could have been an outlier. I mean, is it possible that she uh, went right to the apex of a pyramid in a way that really no other woman could possibly go? Well, Reverend Smith, I wouldn't use the word pyramid. Did she ever tell you what her favorite poem was? What? Well, I'm going to do like she did with all of her directors. You see that bird flying up there? All right. Well, here it is. I have a dream. Oh, I have a premonition that soars on silver wings. It's a dream of your accomplishments, a many wondrous things. I do not know beneath which sky or where you'll challenge fate. I only know it will be high. I only know it will be great. Well, that is a nice poem. This is a poem we need right at the start of the service. Well, you know, Reverend Smith, the poem was about praying for others to succeed beyond their wildest dreams. It's also our corporate poem. It's on the wall of our lobby. Well, uh, we could combine it with uh, that one from uh, Philippians 4.13. I know that I can do all things in Him who strengthens me. Any classic lesson? Sounds good to me. Yes, we really have to nail down the point that my mother's death has made a new life for hundreds of thousands of women possible. <laughs> Now, Marilyn, I wouldn't use the word new life because, uh, you see, that's really God's line of work and we don't want to, you know, get too forceful in terms of what your mother was able to do. And well, we'll get some drafts to you, Reverend, ahead of time so you can keep the fire of faith burning in it. Well, we'll get some drafts to you. Richard, Reverend, I'm sorry. I'm, I've, been had a, I've been having a lot of stress lately, but I think this will all be good. A major exposition, time for family, and just a few directors. Given the fact that your mother was a true believer, it's going to be a pleasure to do this service. Thank you, Reverend.